douchebag with a gun here. Now, I've shown off a good number of long guns on my channel, but I have specifically held one back. Not for any real reason, to be honest, but it isn't the sexiest gun, nor is it the most expensive one that I have owned or have featured. But it happens to be my go-to carbine, if for no other reason than it has been very reliable, very accurate, and very practical. Now, the rifle that you see here started its life as a humble Stag Arms AR-15 that I procured from my brother Dick some years ago when he needed beer money. When I got it, it had a 16-inch barrel with the front sight gas block, standard carbine furniture and whatnot, and was pretty much internally stock. As you can see, that is no longer the case. So when I bought this guy, I didn't really need another AR-15, but I wanted a project. So I pretty much took everything out and started all over using just the lower receiver. Now, other than the takedown pins, mag release, and the bolt catch, nothing about this gun is the same as when I first bought it. So let's go over it from ass to mouth, because that's how I roll. Now, starting on the ass end, we have a Magpul CTR stock. I don't really want to mess with any fancy folding mechanisms or extra parts that could screw with the reliability or add any dead weight. So I kept the ass end of this thing pretty much straightforward. So the receiver extension, the end plate, all that are just standard fare. Moving forward, the safety is from Magpul. And yes, it is ambidextrous. The safety has the 45 degree throw and as far as I can tell, I don't think that Magpul actually makes these anymore, but you can get a safety selector from Daveski that has the Magpul levers on there if you really enjoy their polymer stuff. Personally, I like the Radiant selector better, but this one has been just fine. The grip is an MOE from Magpul. Nothing fancy, but up until they made the MOE K grips, this was my favorite. Now, moving to the trigger, I will give you three guesses what we got in there. No? 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 Now, this one, to be honest, is either the Gasly SSA or the SSAAE trigger. I'm 100% don't remember, to be honest with you. Now, personally, I prefer the Super Dynamic Enhanced trigger with a flat face, but that's really just me and this thing is super crisp, super short, and it's still a two-stage trigger. And overall, it's just fantastic. Now, there is a Magpul enhanced trigger guard on here. When I built this gun, I was living in a much colder place, so gloves were a necessity for about six months out of the fucking year. That is no longer an issue for me, but it doesn't hurt to have the extra room so I could wear duty gloves or something like that without worrying about a negligent discharge. Now, I added a set of the KNS anti-rotation pins in here to keep shit from walking out on me. Hasn't really been much of an issue for me since I learned how to install fire control groups properly, but back in the day I did have a hammer pin or two start wandering out, so this was a cheap solution to ensure that wouldn't happen again. Now moving on to the uppers. We have standard upper receiver with the forward assist. And that's really just because that's what was available for me at the time. I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other on the forward assist, so it is what it is. Uh, the charging handle is a Radiant Raptor SD. So that's supposed to be more better at mitigating extra gas in your face when you shoot suppressed. I guess it helps, but I wouldn't claim it's gonna solve all the issues. Oh, and uh, in case you were wondering, yes, it is ambidextrous. Now, moving up top, we have a set of uh, Troy battle sights for my backup iron sights. Um, these do have the tritium inserts in them. They're really nice, uh, though the tritium is probably dying or dead by now because I've had this rifle for quite some time. But either way, they still serve as excellent irons as a backup to the uh, EXP-S2 EOTech with the EOTech magnifier 
this is the 3x magnifier and uh anybody who's been watching my channel knows i do love eotex i do hate their battery life and um that is really discouraging for me but these are still in my opinion for me anyhow uh, the best overall optic for just general use, especially when you're talking about an SBR like this. Um, so with the 3X magnifier, I can get positive target acquisition. I'm blind as a fucking bat without my uh, prescription lenses in there, so I need something to make sure I'm not shooting at the wrong person. Can you take my stupid glasses and put them on the nightstand? Make sure they're close by because that fish upset my stomach and I might need them if I have to go to the bathroom later on. Okay. Now, the handguard is a Midwest Industries. Now, I love the Gasly handguards, you know, that they put on their URGI rifles and whatnot. Those things are really, really nice, and you can run them over with a friggin' tank, and they won't even bend. But, for one, I ain't getting run over by any tanks, and if I do, uh, my rifle's the least of my concerns at that point. And, uh, two... I did want to keep this lightweight with all the extra shit I got going on on the front end, uh, reducing any front end weight uh, as much as possible just made more sense to me. So um, this is a very practical solution. Now it does have QD points, uh, you know, four of them all together. I don't really like using QD uh, slings anymore. I'm kind of moving away from that, but uh, I'll talk about that in another, for another video. Um, but yeah, this one, th this handguard works just fine. Now as for the barrel, I'm running a BCM. It is an 11.5 inch with the one in seven twist. Has chrome bore and chamber and uh, manganese phosphate finish. Now this is not the um, hammer forged fancy as one. Um, those weren't really readily available for me at the time. Uh, but this is still a really, really nice barrel. Now, if any of y'all were getting confused or pissed, um, I'll let you off the hook. The truth is that this is actually two guns. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? That's what made you, you did. I lied. I had originally decided to SBR an MMP-15 that I had bought years back. And as soon as I got the tax stamp, my wife decided she liked that gun so much that it became hers. Claimed whether you like it or not. So I was you, I'd hand it over. Now, before you get to wishing you ain't never even got out of bed this morning. It ain't yours. So when my brother decided to sell his stag arms rifle, I figured I would just build myself another 11.5 inch and get the tax stamp for that one too. So now I have my twins. And aside from a few minor touches, they are essentially identical. My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. So the one on the bottom is mine. And uh, you should be able to tell that because it's got a vertical grip on here, and you know me and my vertical grips. So it's got a Magpul MVG, whereas the wife prefers the... AFGs from Magpul, so that's what she gets. I have a Surefire Scout dual fuel white light on mine, while she got a Surefire Scout Mini that is actually running to a mod button that she can actuate with her support hand. Both guns have an AAC Mini 4 S556 silencer that mounts up uh, via the AAC blackout muzzle brakes with the 51T ratchet mount system. So that's these guys. And they make that annoying ting when you don't have a silencer on there. So uh, it's really good to just put something on the end of these things. Now, these guys are a little heavy, but they do take the bite out of the muzzle crack of a 5.56, especially when you're talking about a short barrel like these 11.5s. And they do dampen the muzzle flash a bit too, so it does kind of help uh, keep your position a little bit more discreet. Now, 
Now, before I crack one of these open, um, and internally they are identical, uh, I do have a Steiner D-Ball I squared on mine. Um, this one is just the IR designator and IR illuminator. Uh, so there's no visible light on this particular guy. I'll show you, this is that Radian Raptor SD charging handle. You can see it's uh, got these really gnarly um, cuts in there. And these will rip the shit out of your hand or any cleaning cloth you're using when you're trying to clean this up. But... This is supposed to help vent some of the gas off if you're running a suppressor on your gun so that uh, it blows more out of the uh, the side port, the ejection port, rather than into your face back here. So, I don't know. It sort of works, but it certainly is no magic bullet. The bolt carrier is from Bootleg Industries. It's got this little adjustable system here with four different settings to go from unsuppressed to suppressed. And I'm going to talk about this. The idea is that you can adjust it so that it vents more gas out of the side of the bolt carrier rather than using it to cycle the action. And so you can keep it so that it's not quite as overgassed. In theory, it's kind of cool. And it does actually work. However, I got cute one time right before going to a carbine course and adjusted mine down one setting from unsuppressed. And then the damn gun wouldn't cycle at all during the whole course. Now, first half of the course was all dry fire, so I didn't even know it, but it's an eight hour course. And so for the live fire portion, I'm struggling with my gun that I just needed 30 seconds to get a screwdriver to click this guy over, but the uh, former MARSOC instructor was having none of that. If you ladies leave my island, if you survive recruit training, you will be a weapon. You will be a minister of death praying for war. But until that day, you are pukes. You are the lowest form of life on earth. You are not even human fucking beings. You are nothing but unorganized, grabastic pieces of amphibian shit. And so he made me just tap and rack my damn gun every single time I pulled the trigger, which got old real fast. It was pouring rain and I gashed the shit out of myself racking on this charging handle. So... My point is, uh, you know, foo foo shit is um, probably stupid. Do I care if my gun's a little overgassed? Probably not. It's only going to help reliability. I'm not shooting this thing in full auto, and I never will. So I don't really think I'm going to be beating it up all that much. Um, I do not recommend anybody buy any of these foo foo bolt carriers. Not for that application. If you got your own reasons, more power to you, man. But. Uh, I haven't taken it out yet because I spent a fortune on these guys. Um, and if you just keep it on the unsuppressed setting, it just works just fine. And it is well staked up on the top. So it's not, it's a very well made bolt carrier. It's very heavy duty. Uh, so I ain't worried about that. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. That's all I have to say about that. So what are my final thoughts? Well, as I said in the beginning of this video, this gun, or these guns, I should say, have been great. I realize ballistically that an 11.5 inch barrel is not ideal for a 5.56 cartridge. But these guns are perfect for short to intermediate self-defense distances. And if I shoot uh, 77 grain ammo through them, uh, which is expensive, I know, but it, these are really, really accurate with the 77 grain. These both like that stuff quite a bit. They're also very lightweight and agile, especially if you pop off the silencers. But even with those in place, it is far more handy to maneuver than a 16-inch barrel or even a 14.5. And until I started dicking around with the bolt carrier gas settings, it was 100% reliable. These will continue to be my favorite 5.56 carbines in my collection. And I'm sure I'll keep tinkering with the optics setup, at least on mine. But I am very happy overall with these builds. Now that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out my brother, Douchebag's brother Dick, using the link in the video description down yonder. And remember, I don't know who you are out there, but I got a gun.